well, well, well. Welcome to the show. Long time no speak. I believe it's been like literally like a year and a half since I was on a panel with of yours, if I remember correctly, um, which involved like Dario or something a long, long time ago. I don't know if you remember that, but yeah, well, thank well, you. I'm surprised you remember. Yeah, of course, uh, I remember it a lot. Yeah, it's kind of weird how like I think half the people on that panel just never um like just stopped streaming and stuff you know splinters and dario and the other half yeah. became like twitch villains <laughs> twitch am yeah. i a twitch vill wait was i the twitch villain type uh i think like you're pretty notorious on twitch I right am, yeah i am yeah. yes i'm very yeah. notorious on twitch it's very funny um yeah yeah dario I, think... I haven't talked to dario in a while i hope he's doing all right i've seen him posting yeah. some cringe but but that's all that's nothing new me and Dario always got along despite him having some cringe uh, 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 perspectives and us and us having some very intense disagreements uh, on your panel. In fact, if I recall correctly, we got kind of intense. Um, yeah. But yeah. <laughs> well, welcome. Welcome. Uh, very happy to have you. Um, and uh, so what did you you wanted to talk about identity? Uh, right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, hit me with it. Yeah. Um, so I heard like about half of the uh, conversation you were just having, uh, which was, mm -hmm. uh, it was pretty cool. I think so to me, it kind of sounds like basically you, okay. How do I say this? Um, so it seems like essentially the way you see identity is like, okay, identity can be like a lot of different things. I'm not going to like think too much about like what it is exactly, but I, I think that people have a right to assert their own identity basically right um i mean i i think about identity quite a lot personally um okay. but i i don't like believe that it's easy to come to like uh, a single c solid conclusion about identity i have a lot of personal thoughts and ways that i go about uh crafting and and uh and you know thinking about and reading about and 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 whatever uh identity in various forms but i just don't think i i think it's identity is something that i think is very 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 difficult to um to like codify or universalize um i think that it's it's so sub it is the ultimate subjectivity right like you yeah, yeah. so i feel like it's a hard thing to to try and codify or universalize or generalize i think that so as a result i tend to um have an approach that is uh that al allows people to or that that i argue for a world that would allow people to be you know quite expressive with their with their uh identity in in many many ways because it seems to me at least from my life experience from everything i've read from everything that i believe uh, that uh, people do really well when they have agency over who they are and what and how they're, you know, generally how they're perceived. Obviously, there's like, I don't mean like, like, you know, you, you don't have a reputation or anything like that, but that like you get to choose who you are yeah. and, and what people's like, what people understand about you as you. Um, and I personally, that's certainly very important to me. I don't like, uh, I really don't like people telling me what I can and can't be or who I can and can't be. Um, so yeah, that, that tends to be my approach to identity. I think there's like many models of understanding identity that uh, are at least in some part correct, or perhaps maybe just as correct as others. I just think it's a hard thing to draw any sharp lines on. Yeah. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. I think like, yeah, the thing which like interested me there was, mm -hmm. I guess the expressive part mm -hmm. where essentially like it's the, like identity for the most part i'm i'm saying like this is kind of how you see it right is how is the ability to is like a way of expressing some internal um mechanism right um yeah i mean i think that's certainly part of it right like i don't know how i i don't really know how i would conceptualize identity or what the identity conceptual conceptualization would be of other creatures that aren't like us but uh but but you know uh, uh us type creatures you know we are uh introspective uh, we have an internal world that nobody else can have access to unless we choose to communicate that via uh, visual, audio, uh, you know, olfactory, uh, you know, uh, 
you know, touch and taste. Like these things are the, the, that's the way that we can communicate things about what's going on in our head because we don't have any way of directly transmitting that information. Um, you know, so yeah, I, I tend to think that, that like identity and expression are, are very tightly, uh, um, are very tightly tied, but of course there are people who are very private about their identity, um, and who, uh, you know, uh, only reveal certain parts of their identity to certain people. I think that's true of almost everyone to some degree, but to others, certainly more so. Um, like, I mean, there are things that only my partners know about me. Um, and yeah. that will remain the case until I die. I think that's true for most people. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I guess like, I guess I can probably just give an example from mm -hmm. my life and to explain, but sure, sure. So like for me, I am, uh, ethnically, I guess, Indian, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so my parents were Indian. I mostly grew up in India, right? Okay. Um, but I was born in the U S right. Mm -hmm. And I stayed in the U S until third grade. Yep. So I have like an American accent, for example, like, uh -huh. as you can hear, of course. Um, mm -hmm. and, Additionally, like in India, there are like different schools and stuff. So I went to something called an international school. Um, mm -hmm. Familiar with it. So yep. most of my roommate yeah. an international school, yeah. In yeah. So most of my uh, friends and the people I talked to were also like quote NRIs, so people who were kind of considered non-residential Indians, or at least mm -hmm. were non-residential yeah. Indians, right? Mm -hmm. um, so. I've had like a sort of split identity basically between like, am I sort of American or am I Indian? Right. Mm -hmm. And yeah. one thing which I noticed was like, when I'm staying in India, then I feel more American when I'm staying in America. Now, now I'm in America and I feel more Indian. Right. Mm. So, yeah. And, I think that makes yeah. sense. Like that you would, you would become aware of the differences, you know, based on the proximity uh, that makes a lot yeah. of sense to me. Yeah. Yeah, so I just thought it was interesting because it's it's kind of like a way in which like it's not just that I'm choosing to express this part aspect of my um, identity more. The actual like identity is changing, right? Um, yeah, well, I think there's like I think there's two at there's like two parts of that at least at least the way that I would look at it, and and this could be different for different people, but the way I look at uh, identity is like I think there are I think that it can be very hard, but I think that there are sort of imposed identities uh, and like, uh, and, and unimposed identities, right? So like, right. Um, uh, I mean, there are drastic examples of this, like uh, being a, a, a cr like a criminal, right? Um, right? Somebody else decides that you're a criminal. You don't get mm -hmm. to really choose that. And that's very dehumanizing. Like if you're false, like, I mean, it's dehumanizing even if you're guilty of some sort of crime to be called a criminal. But like even more so, like imagine uh, like uh, imagine like being uh, being called a criminal because of an unjust law. Like if you were like a like a, an example that I could think of off the top of my head is like an escaped slave. Right. That that yeah. person would would totally disagree with slavery um and and yet they're called a criminal for doing for for resisting something they don't think is uh right like these are this is a type of identity i think that is like you are um subjectified you are you are uh something is put upon you but um i, I think that like uh, uh i think there is a lot of a lot of that gets conflated with our sort of personal identities in in the society like ours um, which is like, I mean, who decides like what you like? Well, it's you, right? And you decide how much you share that you like that. This is where you get to the sort of one of the other extremes, which is like another type of identity that's not, that's not taken as seriously. Well, I guess some people probably do, um, is like being a fan of something, right? Like, um, yeah. like you choose that identity, you declare that identity. Nobody, I mean, s some people could call you a fake fan or whatever, but that's like a pretty, we recognize that's like a pretty meaningless thing. Like if you're cheering yeah. for the team, you're probably a fan of that team. Um, and we accept that to be the case. So I, I think that like, I think that first of all, our like, like, like English is like woefully under equipped to, to, to discussions of, um, of identity in its current form, but also like American culture is, uh, is incredibly, it leans very heavily onto the, 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 the side of 
imposing identities on other people. Um, Americans mm. love to tell you uh, what you are, uh, who you are to them. Uh, like, I mean, like, and a lot of this is because of the state. I mean, again, another ex sort of extreme example of this is like how people get called a terrorist, right? Like that's yeah. literally something that like, holy shit like before 9 11 do you think anybody nobody called fucking anybody a terrorist that word entered the lexicon because of 9 11 and then all of a sudden everybody's calling everybody a fucking a terrorist all the time and america is like addicted to this america loves telling people what they are and we have this very um i would argue an almost imperialistic approach to identity where in our society what other people think of you is often um, considered societally more important than what you think of yourself. Um, but I think there's some obvious major flaws to that. Um, for example, most people don't know me as well as I know myself. Most people don't know anybody as well as that person knows themselves. Um, and I've had, I grew up in a family that constantly tried to push different types of identities on me, which is very, very painful um, as it turns out. So I don't know if that makes sense, but like, I think that, it's important to sort of like acknowledge that there's a lot of conflation between how uh, between our ability to self-identify and what is imposed on us. Um, and uh, I think most, I think yeah. a lot of times there's a lot of malicious um, imposition of identity. Um, and uh, we can think of, of course, extreme examples, but there's minor examples as well. Right. Like, I mean, um, uh, I mean, like I can imagine like, uh, minor examples like somebody being called a debate bro right like um yeah. you know that could bother somebody and you know sometimes we go okay we don't really care if that bothers them but it's an example of of a minor imposition of an identity on somebody else and there's sometimes reasons to do this i mean for example i think there's plenty of good reasons to sometimes impose an identity uh, or at least contextually an identity on somebody else like what if somebody is a like a like a like a sexual assaulter and is in danger to the people around you it might be worth it for you to be like hey here's the reason why I say they're that thing even if they say they're not um, but I think that most of the time we don't need to operate that way I think we should that should be the exception rather than the rule yeah I guess yeah. like one I guess one thing just bouncing off that last point mm -hmm. um so like we have for example um let's pick the debate bro example right mm -hmm. so yeah. we have like this person is a debate bro versus yeah. like maybe this person tends to engage in so and so sort of behavior right yeah uh i think it's interesting how even if technically you're trying to say the same thing when you say those two i think there's tends to be a difference like when you hear that um, 100 percent. obviously one is like about who you are and one is just about behavior which you can probably change mm -hmm. i mean that's a part of that like that's an active part of uh like conflict resolution right like if you take a conflict resolution force uh, a course or force course or something like that or even if you read some books on conflict resolution one of the first things they'll tell you is like be careful to avoid essentialization because like if you say like hey that was a really like rude thing that you did that's very different from saying like you are a rude person essentializing people can be yeah. really harsh because it's a it's a totalizing uh imposed it, it is an imposed identity uh that people are likely to take offense to because it's too uh too aggressive and too totalizing um yeah so i think there's a point there i think you're touching on something you know very valid there yeah yeah um i think like I guess an another thing I was I, I was just thinking about. So like, for example, um, I I guess like, what? Okay, how do I say this? Um, so there are different ways that some you can affirm someone's identity, right? So for of example, course. you know, yeah, pronouns is one example, right? Uh, so I think one interesting fact is a lot of people who kind of try to might deny you know xenogenders or whatever mm -hmm. else um it seems to be through this what if they have a sort of invalid way of uh expecting you to uh, affirm their identity right so yeah obviously one thing which can be really obvious is like oh i identify as like a, a six-year-old or like a 15-year-old so mm -hmm. you have to let me like have sex with 15-year-olds right so 
Um, that's like a really yeah, obvious, like invalid strange. way of affirming, affirming yeah. someone's identity, right? Well, I think that's a different claim, though, right? Like there are different types of claims. Um, like an age is not a uh, is is in is in no way like a okay. It is in very uh, it is very implausibly a subjective definition, right? Um, like yeah. if somebody was to say like, uh, "How old are you?" They are asking like, "How long have you been on this planet?" And that isn't exactly, right. I mean, there, you could argue that, of course, there's different perceptions of time. There's different ways of measuring time. But barring those examples, yeah. um, age and gender are two very different things. Um, it's like it would be more like, like if or, I mean, I, not just gender, but there's other different types of, of identities you could say as well that are that are different. Like, for example, uh, age is very different than like the, the previously mentioned um, uh you know, fandom, like right. those are two very different things that they're referring to. When somebody asks you, are you a fan of X? They're basically saying, do you like something enough that you're willing to kind of identify with it publicly? Whereas when somebody's asking your age, they're trying to find out like you're, you know, probably how long you've been on the planet, whether you fit within these certain laws for certain things. So, I mean, I think they're different conversations. Uh, people bring this up a lot with the regard to like the transracialism thing as well. Right. Um, yeah. There's a lot of like a sort of I would say like false uh, comparisons made or, or I wouldn't say false, but but very, very shoddy and and loose comparisons that I think are very clumsy uh, between like being transgender and being transracial, um, which they're very different social constructs um like race is also has a lot of like as a con as a construct has a lot of issues and has a ton of people criticizing it even right now we've completely changed that like like not just on a cultural level but even on an academic level the understanding of what race actually is and how you define it has changed a lot um and uh so i don't know i don't think these i think it's another example of like you're talking about very different things but even within the conversation about race uh people bring up stuff like rachel dolezal and stuff like that and i'm like i don't know like i think there is some level of validity to people who say like hey i was identified this way even if like i'm not like genetically whatever uh, like this is an experience that affected my life socially. So like, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I think it's, I think a lot of it is such in such bad faith that you can't actually get to the heart of either issue. So I, 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 I don't know. It makes me happy when, when people are willing to engage with it outside of like those sort of bad faith comparisons. Yeah. I think, uh, like I, I just brought up the age example because yeah. I thought it was closer to like the sexual assault or sort of thing. But yeah, I think like, um so essentially uh, okay i feel like there are two roads i can go down so sure, sure. i'm just <laughs> I'll, I'll just list the roads and then you can pick whichever one you think is more interesting i guess okay um so road number one is kind of talking a bit more about this how do you like what are some valid ways of affirming someone's identity or mm -hmm. someone's gender right sure. so um of course one might say you know like uh, one invalid way would be maybe you have to be attracted to me, right? So that's right. probably not fair to assert someone else has to do. Right? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I, mean I don't think anybody's, I mean, I really don't think anybody's ever done that. Um, yeah, like even the most aggressive, even the most aggressive person, like I can think of a couple of people who've been pretty aggressive on the like, uh, you know, preference, like, like genital preferences are transphobic kind of front. Like I can think some people who are pretty open and my, my opinion have kind of hot takes on that front. Right. Um, but even those people don't go that far. They're not literally saying they're, they've never advocated for that. I think that's like a complete straw man. Um, but yeah. But, oh yeah. But, I'm but, not, I don't think like people are actually advocating. Like, I guess the question is just like, why, why, why would those be wrong? Like, what? It, where's the line, basically? Or if there's, like, some blur, like, how can we kind of know, like, what is wrong, what is right? Sort of, is there, like, any sort of, like, logical reason? Or Okay. So that's topic one. That's a really good question. What's topic two? Uh, yeah, I guess topic two is basically kind of diving more into gender specifically. So mm -hmm. you said something interesting where, like, you said that, like, Trans, like transracialism and transgenderism they're like referring to different social constructs mm -hmm. so um i mean obviously i agree with that but like i i'm just curious about like how 
how we can again i don't want to like say draw the line because i know there's sometimes blurry lines and things but like yeah. how can we know like where what sort of um like okay uh this might take a little longer to explain but so we have gender right and gender is basically a category of categories so under gender we have like man woman you know whatever mm-hmm. other uh genders right many many so yeah. like potentially yeah, so like yeah so like so is there's like some sort of definition or limiting factor or something we can come up to understand like the upper category of gender right if that makes sense yeah okay so i think i see what you're saying with this second topic is basically like what are the limits of gender expression right like um uh, like what what can we what 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 can we say that like gender like what are the limits of, of gender and honestly I think that's a very hard uh, that's a very very hard thing to answer um, I don't know that I don't know that they're like I don't know that there really are and I think that's part of the reason why I'm like uh, what I, I call myself a, a, a gender ascensionist some people call themselves gender uh, abolitionists but I think ascensionism sounds better um but but it's similar similar basis is uh i guess i think that gender is a pretty not helpful way of understanding things uh i think that right. like um we're kind of caught in this um catch 22 where gender is such a is such an imposed part uh because of largely i would say conservative christianity um, that gender is such an unbelievably rigid and um, specific part of of American culture that uh, that like uh, I think even even people like myself who are more like on the extreme side towards liberation and whatnot um, still yeah. sometimes see things in like a certain framework. One such example of this is that like a lot of people treat gender like it's something that they're discovering. Like it's like ah, I dug I dug in in deep into the gender portion of my brain and I discovered a tablet that had, uh, you know, X gender identity inscribed on it, as though like that is a uh like a like a pre-existing phenomenon. Well, that's not really I don't really think that's how it works. I think that we kind of craft these things as we go and we we use words to um express in various ways you know, what we're experiencing, something that's not um, like a strictly definable process. So I don't know. Um, I think that like, I think that um, we should, I certainly believe we should move away from a a sort of like uh, this weird sort of hyper codified, like there are, but there are genders that we need to dig and discover inside of our head uh, and more towards like, well, gender is actually this sort of cloud and there's all these different ways that we can express ourselves and we should feel free to associate with those and associate them with other people and other groups of people uh, who have, you know, pioneered these types of things or who have made great developments on them. I think that dissolving or at least loosening gender to be something more like that would be really, really good. Uh, and the reason why is because I just I just don't think we're going to have much success um, ever making a like uh, rigid, a useful, rigid, ter- like, uh, definition of gender. Um, it's too abstract. What is gender? Like, f- fuck if I know. It's a bunch of random things that we've determined are somehow valuable to us in some way. And we say they're linked to sex, but they're very rarely ever actually linked to sex. Um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I, I just I think it's too it's one of those things where it's like it's almost a lost cause to try and um and uh you know say like like save the concept of gender it never existed properly in the first place maybe in a extremely sex stratified society you could make the argument that like um that like oh it was helpful for people to know where they were going or whatever but but we can acknowledge that a sex stratified society has a fuckload of really really bad issues yeah, of course so we don't want that so yeah i guess my argument is like i don't think that there's a really good way to do that i think that the and the reason why i am like i don't give a shit when people have more like um you know extreme uh in takes on gender is because like i think that man is an extreme take on gender 
from my perspective. Like I see yeah. gender as such a vague, uh, meaningless, like performative thing that like people saying they're a man is exactly the same as somebody who um, identifies as something else because a man is just as made up as any other thing that you could you could say. I think you can sometimes make certain appeals to history, but usually if you investigate those claims and appeals, they're erroneous to begin with. Uh, people make appeals to traditional manhood all the time that actually doesn't line up with the real history. Like, for example, you'll hear uh, conservatives be like, men used to be like this, men used to be like that, and then that's right. just not true. You actually go and look at the historical record and they're factually incorrect, that men didn't actually used to be any more tough and rough and tumble or anything, um, or in fact that they may have been co the opposite like, you know, I mean, again, like one of the great examples is like, oh, yeah, men don't engage in, in gay shit. You know what I mean? And then it's like, well, like tell that to the Greeks. You know what I mean? Like literally they yeah. would be like, what the fuck are you talking about? They wouldn't even be able to understand your understanding of manhood. Um, yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? Like these definitions are so vague as to be uh, I feel like we we'd be best. It would be it would be good for the entire world if we made gender something that is we treat it basically as arbitrary me next to meaningless and we focus on much more important things. Cool. Uh, yeah. yeah, I guess, uh, then we should probably just go down route number one then, right? Sure. Sure. Yeah. I kind of went down route number two without even mentioning it, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess like, so basically route number one. Now I need to like tr walk back and like remember. <laughs> That's but, fine. Uh, yeah, it's, so basically we were just talking about how, um, like, there are different ways that um, w a person can expect others to affirm their identity. And, ah, yes, uh, yeah. What are, like, um, so what would those, what would, like, valid ways be, and how would we kind of decide, right? Yeah, um, I mean, I, I don't know if there's, like, a single, like, line you can draw on that. Um, I don't know. I, I know you're not really asking for like a single line, but like uh, that's another one where I find it hard to, to give us a, a strong answer. I think a lot of this has to be sort of negotiated between individuals, right? Like um, for me, I think that it's like, I think there are some clear cut examples um, where it's just like totally reasonable. Like I think it's totally reasonable for people to ask for whatever their pronouns are to be respected. Um, yeah. With like exception to the aforementioned things like Nazi gender, where I don't, I would never I would never expect anybody to respect Nazi gender because not nobody should respect Nazis. They're monsters. Like, right. no. Um, but like outside of things like that, like I think that it's really reasonable. It's just it, I think personally that it's very reasonable uh for people to ask that like, hey, I use it its pronouns. Uh hey, I use uh, you know, she her, I use Z Zer, I use Fei Fei or whatever. I think none of these things are so intrusive that it stretches uh any any concept of difficulty. Um the like again, uh like I said when I was talking to Somniostatic, a lot of the arguments against this are used uh are, are like uh generated using um completely false uh, like straw men. So like the idea that like trans people will freak out about you, uh, will freak out on you. Uh, if you, if you misgender like them by accident or whatever, um, is just like completely stupid. Has somebody, has a trans person done it? Yeah. Trans people have done a lot of things. So have cis people, um, like everybody, like anybody, there's all kinds of things, irrational, bad things that can happen. But the idea that this is like a norm is completely absurd. Um, no, right. you know, trans people most of the time just literally shut the fuck up and just deal with it. And it sucks. I know firsthand. Um, so I don't know. I, I think that like most of the conversations we're having now, at least for me, fall into the like obvious category of like, yeah, any person has a right to do that. And and the thing is for me is like, um, you know, my perspective is kind of a, maybe maybe this is a little too interpersonal of an approach, but it's like uh, uh, I don't I don't feel like uh, anybody um like in society should be like punished for like not respecting my gender unless they're like a doctor or something and then you could make that argument um well i've had doctors not do that but uh but like i i think that um i think that a lot of times it just comes down to uh, uh like a like again an interpersonal check which is that if i'm talking to somebody and that person is not willing to respect my gender 
um, like the most basic thing. They're not willing to respect my pronouns. Like I don't yeah. have, like why should I why should I proceed or why should I give them the time of day? Why why should I pretend that they're not just being a giant uh, baby about it? You know what I mean? I I won't. You're being stupid. It's the same thing. Like it's like I don't know. Uh, if you if you change the 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 circumstance and you make it less about gender, like if you if uh I don't know. What if uh what if I invited you on and um like I kept calling you like like I don't know. Uh, like like a different streamer's name over right. and over again. It would be very annoying, and it would also be like really rude. And you would have every right to be like, "Fuck you!" Like, stop. So yeah, I feel like I, uh, I feel like it comes down to that sort of thing, if that makes sense. A lot of times. Yeah. So I think so. To me, it sounds like basically what you're saying is like I can't like come up with some rigid rules or hard line to like yeah. say what is a valid form of affirmation of one's identity and not. Yeah. But I think 99% or probably 99.99% of the time, uh, it's going to be obvious. Uh, there's, it's people generally don't ask for like that much to affirm their identity. Yeah. I think that's largely true. I think there are some times where like, um, maybe that's not true, but like I can give you a more mundane example that I feel is like more common. You might've even experienced this yourself. Um, right. Have you ever met somebody who insists that you call them doctor? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and like um, that is way more common than people insisting you use their pronouns. Way more common to meet somebody who's insufferable about forcing everybody to recognize their doctor status. Um, right. I've met people like that where they will literally correct you. Um, that's doctor. And I'm just like, mm, like like uh, and that's way more common in my opinion. And I think that we can acknowledge that like I mean you know, most people will be like, okay, doctor, you know, you kind of entertain them or whatever. Cause it's not that big of a deal, but like, we can acknowledge that like, we already have some, some examples of this in the world that like, aren't that they, they don't like, uh, they don't like dissolve the entire fabric of social situations for us to be like, okay, sorry, your doctor, whatever. Like, uh, in the same way that like, I don't know if you, uh, if somebody like if a trans person got really, really pissed about a misgender, like an accidental misgender, it might be considered a social faux pas for it to become a huge issue. But, you know, right. I think by and large, like most of the time there's, uh, you know, most of the time the, the fever pitch of discourse is c completely out of step with what the ask is. The ask is, hey, please, will you let us decide what pronouns we use for ourselves, please? And the response is, you're just dissolving Western civilization. You're you're lying. You're trying to sneak into women's space. It's ridiculous. So, yeah, I, I yeah. feel like it's just like our ability to have a rational conversation on this is kind of distorted by the by the context of our current politics. I think obviously there are um, some examples that are like uh, kind of unreasonable. Like, uh, for example, um, I think that like, um, you know, if you were to say like, like uh, the, to, to literally do the meme, I can't believe I'm going to do this, but just for the sake of conversation, to literally right. do the attack helicopter meme, if somebody walked up to you and said, I am atta an attack helicopter, um, I think that it would be pretty reasonable for a lot of people to be kind of like, mm, you don't look like an attack helicopter. And I don't think that right. that would be like reasonably considered like uh, a bigoted or whatever. Um, but like, um, but like, first of all, that doesn't happen. Second of all, like, what's the claim being made? Well, they're making a claim that they are another identified object that has a pretty solid definition, right? Um, not like, it's not like, uh, you know, woman or, or man, which are these completely meaningless terms. Um, and, uh, and, and also like, even still at the end of the day, okay, well, all right, sure. If you identify as an attack helicopter, that's perfectly fine. It's not hurting anybody. Um, so, yeah, I, I, it, it, it's a tough question. I just think that, like, uh, I tend to think a lot of times that, like, um, there are extremes that we can sum up and we usually do a pretty decent job, like, encountering them, um, uh, or, or like or, or like sorting them for the most part when these sort of genuine examples it's always when the like ideology and the fever pitch moral panics get involved that it starts to get really deranged because i think like again um we, we we have no problem um i mean 
nicknames. Uh, all, there's all kinds of examples of things that people ask for others to do. Honorifics is one that like people are asked to do all the time, and we more or less just go, yeah, okay. Um, and occasionally you get somebody who's like, I insist on being called, uh, you know, uh, Prince, uh, Prince Lord Barony of the, of the 56th order of, 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 you know, whatever. And they have some huge long title and most people are going to roll their eyes and go, okay, I'm not really going to use that title. Cause that's like exhausting. Um, but for yeah. the most part, there's, there's not a whole lot. I, I, I struggle to think of a lot of examples uh, of practical examples of people asking too much about self-identity. You could perhaps point to like the age thing because they're asking you to, to answer a different question than what's being asked. You know, if you're asking somebody their age, you're not asking for a piece of, of necessarily um, like identity. You're asking for a fact about their body, usually for the purpose of like, um, you know, health or something. Um, but I, I don't know. Do you have an example? Like, I don't know, maybe you have one in mind of like an example of something that might be considered like unreasonable and like maybe we can grapple with that. Um, let me, let me think. Uh, so, an example of a situation where someone identifies in a certain way and mm. demands that be respected, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so let me see. Okay, so uh, I, I don't know if this will be... I, I guess this kind of works. Um, so okay. a, a lot of the time... So you're familiar with, like, you know... Okay, I'm sure you know what like homeopathy and all are. Yeah. Of course, yes. Uh, I'm very familiar so, with homeopathy. I, I've actually done multiple segments taking down homeopathy stuff. Yeah. So I, um, I, I some of my, my parents have sometimes like taken me to like homeopathy clinics and stuff. So yeah, uh, I'm like Sorry. somewhat familiar with them, but yeah, I, I, I'm I, I'm not sure if this would be considered like I, I guess it could be like they see themselves as like. A doctor right and they mm. demand essentially that be respected and that they be treated like a valid doctor whose uh medicine and whatnot is like valid right yeah so i guess that would be like an example yeah okay yeah i actually think that's a pretty good thing for us to jump off of and talk on to so like in this particular case i don't think this is so much of a matter of identity um well i guess it is but like in a different way um, the information when, when we have an honorific like doctor that is supposed to uh, it, the social function of, of that in like it's an ideal form is to help you find somebody who can help you if you're in need, right? Like that's kind of the purpose of most of like spe specifically yeah. medical doctors. The per reason why we even have an honorific like that is because it's supposed to make it it serves a purpose of us being able to help somebody or f us being able, being able to locate someone who might be able to tell you what's happening if your body is dying um, mm -hmm. and, or, or hurting or whatever. Um, and I think that the problem that you run into with um, with like people just taking that and not having any sort of structure is that you d you stop being able to do to like use it at all, right? So like if anybody can claim to be a doctor and and walk around as saying they're a doctor, um, well anybody can, right? We already know that. Yeah. Like I can, I could. Uh, by the way, I'm Doctor Demon Mama now. I mean, <laughs> the, nobody's gonna stop me from doing that. There's like I mean, there was a, a meme about that this with a YouTuber who used professor in their name, you know, and there was some right. me there was some like discourse about that where it's like, okay, yeah, like you kind of, and and my position was like, okay, yeah, like if you put it in your YouTube channel and you're a political and academic YouTuber, that's your that's the context you're talking about things in, and you call yourself professor, then yeah, you're kind of giving a false impression of of like, uh, you having some sort of. Uh, credibility even if i think that that credibility is not so great right like i have a lot of critiques of uh of, of all kinds of institutions and um and accreditation systems but nonetheless like we can acknowledge that like somebody claiming to be a professor who doesn't match any of those criteria is probably not being the most forthright um the the thing is yeah. like again i think that these serve a different purpose than like gender does um uh, like gender's purpose is 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 extremely hard to determine, um, and uh, and it, it, it it's very it's a very again it's a very different ask when um when somebody is asking that you call them doctor or is using the term doctor there is a there is a very material effect from that claim because it is a a a 
title that has a, a, a very essential context or a arguably quite essential context, which is like you need to find somebody to help you not die. Um, and yeah. I think those things greatly affect, uh, uh, you know, uh, greatly affect uh, this conversation. Um, and uh, and so, yeah, I, I do think so. I do think that's a good like a good example of something. But but again, I don't think that like um, I don't think that that usually uh, the doctor thing is like a uh, is is like a, a a matter of 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 sort of personal identity. It's more of like a this person is trying to uh, to use to take advantage of a previously established uh, norm that exists for a pretty decent reason, for a pretty reasonable reason, and they're trying to use that for their own personal gain or to push their knowledge um, without due. Uh, without due, um, uh, I don't know, without having, you know, without going through the loops that, that we actually generally agree upon is what makes a doctor. And by the way, I think there are like people who are legally doctors who don't deserve the title of doctor as well. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, the due diligence. Yeah, there's like, ton yeah, like, I mean, I can think, yeah, exactly. Blanchard is an example from the trans stuff of like a, somebody who uh, is a doctor technically, but whose research has been disgraced because it was riddled with fucking discrimination and and uh, prejudice and horrific, horrific mistakes in science, in scientific method. Um, yeah. So I don't know. It, it's, it's kind of a hard conversation, uh, but I hope that I hope that answers at least some of what you were pointing at there. Um, yeah. I do think there are lines, obviously, um, but most of them are are again they're contextual, and I think that they can be um, sorted quite reasonably without having to make like um, broad sweeping rules that negatively affect people's ability to just be who they say they are. Um, yeah, maybe you can't. Maybe maybe you know maybe we can agree that like hey, it's not really fair for you to call for people to just call themselves a doctor without any sort of plausible. Um, or reasonable medical, um, you know, medical training or, or, yeah. or whatever, but yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, um, I think the doctor example is interesting, uh, just because at least in my experience, I don't know, maybe the guy I was talking to was like actually like an incredible scam artist, but it, to me, it seemed like he genuinely believed that he's, he had the knowledge, um, mm -hmm. just because he went to like the alternative medicine, like school and all this stuff. Right. Yeah. So. I think it's like just an interesting case where we kind of have to assert our own knowledge system like over someone else's, right? Yeah, like, I think yeah. there are junctions where that just comes where that is an inevitability. But I think we want to have, we want to use that we want to use that contingency only when we have to, right? Like right. I would hope that like we wouldn't spend all of our time like policing everybody's uh, mm -hmm. bit of their identity, why they chose their first name or sec or their nickname or whatever. Um, but I think, that, of course, there are situations that are like that. Um, I think that, like, you can make a very good case and you would not be being, like, bigoted or anything to say, like, hey, this homeopathic doctor is is using the name doctor to uh, to grant, you know, to grant credence to something that doesn't help you and might actually hurt you. Um, I think that's a pretty good argument. I think that's a valid argument to say, hey, I'm critiquing this claim to this, you know, this honorific. Um and I don't think that really is like I don't think that comes into a conversation of bigotry because I think it serves a different purpose. Whereas I really don't think there's like a, a good way to go about like challenging somebody's nickname or somebody's personal like gender identity or or maybe even their racial identity. I, I'm very uh, you know, I'm I'm very, uh, very, very averse to uh, ever challenging anybody's racial identity, um, even if somebody who looked white like uh, like was like, oh, I'm black or whatever. I don't think that I would, I just don't think I would have any reason to, to, to be like, no, um, unless they were like really like, I don't know, really going hard or something because I just don't see there's any value value in it. Right. Like there are light skin, there are light skin black people like, like, yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, I guess like that road, it seems like we kind of, I kind of understand where you're coming from. Uh, this is like a little bit separate, um, mm -hmm. but like, so one other interesting thing I was thinking about. So the reason I kind of just thought thought about this is because we were talking about it in my uh, political science class, right? So yeah. Uh, so like 
one thing they were talking about there a lot was the idea that uh, essentially to have an in group you need an out group, right? Yeah. Um, so like, for so that made me think like, okay, for example, if we had someone, um, I don't know, if we had like a society which was filled with only men, right? Okay. Or, or only women or whatever, right? Uh huh. Um, like it the genders which would be created which would be normalized in that society would probably be like completely different right because they would divide themselves like on things which are relevant to them right yeah um uh, in fact there's some like there's a there's it's a common thing in sci-fi uh that people play with societies that have completely different gender roles um uh and fuck there's even a comic that's like uh there's there's two sexes uh, like two identified sexes, but three identified gender roles in their society. Um, right. And it's like, there's like uh, these, there's like the, 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 the like uh, females that are like super, uh, they like, they have the babies and everything like that. And they're, they're, uh, they live like they're very rare and whatever in this, in this uh, fictional universe. Right, and yeah. then there's, yeah. in this fictional society. And then there's like a fuckload of males. And as a result of like the, the sex imbalance, the, like the males fuck each other all the time. Um, there's like both like, uh, like what we would consider masculine males. And then there's preening males who, uh, who are right. like, you know, they, they emulate the feminine types and they fuck each other and it's just cool. Um, and it's very cute, but like, so that, that happens all the time. Anyway, I didn't mean to go off on a tear, but, but yeah. Um, yeah, no. Uh, so yeah, I, Go ahead. Um, I think that's interesting. Uh, so I was kind of thinking about like, okay, so we can't have so we can't have an in group without an out group, right? Generally, um, but I was thinking like one interesting example is, uh, well, okay, actually, uh, never mind. That that's an example. <laughs> um, I was gonna say okay. humanity, but obviously there are things which are not human. So, um, but I think like one interesting case where we can talk about okay in a situation where everyone is the same in this in this sort of like quality we can't group based on that quality um but i think like in a situation where everyone is different based on a certain quality it you also can't group based on a certain quality right so like if everyone had um i don't know a different number of fingers on their hands mm. or something right somehow yeah. right um it would be very difficult to i get it would be very difficult to kind of group people based on that i guess in that situation you have like greater than so and so amount less than so and so amount like sure yeah if we had like a situation where you couldn't really do that right yeah um, i don't know it's hard it's hard to explain and it feels like gender is sort of like that which is what makes it like kind of hard to group people like these two people are the same gender right yeah i mean that's the thing like right like i mean uh the expression like here let me just are you looking at the are you able to see my screen right now uh i oh one second like my no, my stream okay well don't worry about it uh, I'll, I'll do this for my for the for the benefit of the audience hey fawn come here fawn come here so for the audience who's watching and sees the screen fawn and i look a lot different we express ourselves a lot different now you all kind of know we're both like femme leaning because we have a pretty broad definition of femme but like in a world where we did not have any concepts of like uh you know femininity and masculinity and we only had other animals on the species like people or on the planet like people might conclude that like we are different sexes or different genders because i'm like big and butch and 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 fawn is like small and 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 goblinoid and very cute and i am like very big and scary and like grr, and whatever and businessy and whatever um so like those uh like so do you see how like it could like in the absence of that like there's so much variation in humanity that we might end up forming completely different assumptions about gender completely um that might even be more accurate than what we use now i don't know does that does that kind of make sense as to what i'm saying there uh yeah okay I thought when you said like, "Can you see my screen?" I thought you meant like your computer screen. But oh yeah, no, no, I, I just like meant. Sorry, I meant my uh, my 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 stream. I meant to say sorry. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Uh, so I think like, I guess for me, taking a step further, I would say, like, okay. I guess like 
if we say that everyone has different genders, I think mm -hmm. we need to just to dig deeper into that like sort of uh, um, question or whatever. So yeah. essentially, what we're saying is there are certain qualities associated with gender. We can't like really say what they are. It's very vague, but mm -hmm. there are some qualities, and everyone and there's so much diversity in these qualities that no two people have the exact same of said qualities, right? Yeah. Um, so like, and gender is essentially a way to group people based on these qualities. So yeah, I guess like, is um, that what gender is? Like, I, that's the thing. I don't know that that's really what gender is. Like, I mean, I think that's how some people use it. Um, like, I think that's how, I don't know. I think it's used for, see, that's the thing. I mean, it is used to, to group people, but to what end, uh, like yeah. in our society, it's, really weird how we use gender like um like for example like i guess we use gender to kind of like determine who's the like okay if we're gonna go by like raw american gender roles as best as i can kind of codify them uh or i guess we could go let's try conservative gender roles uh, uh guys are the breadwinners the leaders and the strong ones women are the like the like artsy um sensitive child caring types um but then like what about like what would i even be in that in that you know uh like how would i be why how would i be categorized in that like i am oh you know openly feminine i get identified by other people uh as she her like pretty frequently constantly but i'm like i am a stronger person like uh if i was like if i was being separated on those like Am I just going to be forced is me being like the type who like I like to, you know, carry stuff and I like to do like more rough and tumble shit. That's just how I am. I've always been that way. I'm a, I even like debating and stuff like that. Um, like, am I going to get forced into the the like the, the, the child rearing side of things? Or am I going to get forced over into the side that's the manual labor, hard working leader type? What if I have yeah. characteristics from both and on our society? it make it doesn't even work tons and tons of people don't f like match those so i guess that's the thing it's like uh those systems of categorization have to have a purpose and i would say that like i think we can have categorizations of gender if we really want to i kind of think that like we should kind of move beyond like i think we should just kind of leave gender behind and we should think about other things um in different ways yeah. and talk about them in different ways but um but let's say that we move forward people like gender or whatever or stick with it um imagine if uh oh hey merrick good to see you uh imagine if in like in like some sort of future like uh the genders are the only thing that gender refers to is like your style at the moment so like maybe one day you go to a party uh in a dress and people say oh wow oh my god you're looking really femme tonight and you go oh thank you because in that like as where we've advanced to femme just is like a a descriptor for how you're dressing for a certain set of things for how you're dressing and that's all that it means maybe that would be better maybe it would be like uh less stringent and harder to draw those lines but wouldn't that maybe be more useful um, I think of like music genre, right? Like music genres are really vague. There's a lot of stuff that crosses genres and most, most songs uh, will be multi-genre. You know, they'll have like, it'll be like, oh, this is country rock, whatever. This is blah, blah, blah. This is, uh, yeah, there's all kinds. Um, and, uh, so, um, like, I, I think that maybe that's, maybe that's where we're at with gender right now. At least that's kind of how I look at it, where it's like, hey, most people seems to me that gender um, is just kind of like a descriptor of how they dress and maybe a little bit how they act, um, depending. Um, and we have like a lot of little, um, you know, we have a lot of little like variations and rules for that. Um, uh, but right now there's still this overwhelming pressure uh, to try and force people, uh, people who really do not conform to what the, like what conservatives claim the gender roles are because they were literally just, not only are they just societally out of date, they're also just like, they never were really that good to begin with. They were never accurate to begin with, but like we're, we're talking about some of these, some conservatives advocate for gender roles that were established like thousands of years ago in a very specific society. Uh, it's complicated, but I think that like we could move to a system that has, um, like 
I guess, less rigid uh, definitions, and it would still be useful for us in the same way that like a genre of music is still useful to us very much so, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I guess so. Um, yeah, I guess like, so when, it, so I think maybe this is just a language quirk or whatever, but uh -huh. like when I say like gender is a category, so we can say it like to take your example of like style basically, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so we can have at any given point in time, right? Uh -huh. People who have like a femme style, who have like a mask style and who have like some combination, some completely different styles, some both styles or whatever, right? Uh -huh. uh, and then we, for each of these, let's say we have the femme, like, gender or category or whatever, uh -huh. right? We can say, let's put all the people who are femme in this category. So, like, that's what I kind of mean when I say gender as a category. So, um, so like, I don't, I kind of mean it in more of a descriptive way, right? Not sure. like okay you you have to be in like this category or that category yeah, yeah. thing it makes sense uh, just saying like okay this is what we identify as like say saying like okay uh all else aside we pick a de we pick like an arbitrary definition of what or or you know not not like not just roll of a dice but you know not necessarily a super stringent definition of what femme is what femme means and then we go okay those people kind of match this sort of femme sphere um and you could identify i mean i think this happens like there's this there's these charts like obviously these meme charts that are like the uh the 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 femme to butch uh, I don't know, maybe this is a, obviously, wait, I, by the terminology it's very obvious this is like a lesbian in community thing, but there's like these meme charts that have been around forever of like, uh, it'll be like a little scale and it's like pink on one side blue on the other, it'll be like femme to butch and then they'll put stuff on mm -hmm. there like Dark Souls characters on the femme to butch right. scale, weapons or whatever and those things are always little memes and that's all, all of that is in, is in in an understanding of non-binary general like femininity so it's kind of an interesting little thing like that is not like uh there's nothing there that's like even sex specific it's a it's a uh loose light-hearted categorization system that's based off of like associations between um between styles and and weapons and dark souls uh, so yeah, I do think such things like that can exist. I just think we gotta be careful about when we impose them on other people. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I guess like to kind of bring it full full circle. So like, essentially, the the tricky thing is that we have these like qualities by which people vary by like you know femme or, uh, and things like that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the tricky thing is when we say gender, we're set okay so this is why like i feel like gender debates are so difficult because i think gender ref if you say like define gender you can be talking about like three different things right um but like in this case we are simultaneously talking about the categories which we just discussed mm -hmm. right yeah um and we're also talking about those qualities themselves right uh which mm -hmm. i think so I think that's where I was a little bit like confused when you said like there are infinite genders, everyone has like different genders because like which one are you referring to? But now I think I kind of get what you're understanding yeah. what you're getting at. I think that like uh, I think that the act of attempting to codify genders uh, in any strict way is a totally fruitless venture um, outside of very, very, very niche uses. Like for example, right. uh, I mean... I know that, uh, like, I tend to gravitate towards femme type people. I just do in general. Um, mm -hmm. And is that a hard definition? No, because there's all kinds of non femmes that I've liked. There's all kinds of people who probably wouldn't consider themselves femme, but who looked femme to me, kind of. And so I was gravitated towards them. Uh, there's all of these, uh, all of these things like that. Um, but, uh, but I don't think I think that that should be like the extent of it. And that's about as hard as I'm willing to go with like imposing gender stuff. So generally, yeah. I tend to believe that gender should just be a matter of people's self-identity. Um, and I think that over time, if we promote, uh, you know, that type of a, a view of gender, that we might actually see people basically just shrugging their shoulders a lot of the time, like you kind of did a little bit. Like you walked in and said, well, you know, I usually go by he, him, but I'm really any all. 
Like that's kind of exactly what I'm talking about, right? It's just kind of like, I don't really know or care. Um, here's, you know, you're going to hear my voice and, uh, may, and my voice has these qualities and you don't really need to associate that with a pronoun. It can just be those qualities. Um, because the pronoun and or the or the gender identity wasn't actually really helping us identify anything meaningful in the first place it just kind of uh put a lot of bad expectations and i think another way that it could go i think that's one way that it goes i think the other angle is that like uh people um like the the there's a sort of uh general uh moving away from from uh the strict that the strictly codified gender rules that are taught in churches and stuff like that, as maybe people move away from churches and stop really teaching that sort of thing. And then what it means is what that ends up happening is that, um, you know, masculinity and femininity stop being terms that people use as frequently. And maybe there's like niche uses, uh, but otherwise they're just kind of like left to the wayside as people realize that like, okay, this doesn't actually like saying somebody is feminine. doesn't really give me a lot of information about them. See, there's like two sides that I think right. that this approach is that we can get that, that like I think are good things. I think the world would be a better place if we uh, like instead of fixating on gender and asking like what's the gender? What's their gender? What's their what's the gender reveal party? What the hell? What do you do? Oh, that's that's men for you. Oh, that's women for you. Oh, that's blah, blah, blah. like all that shit. If we put that aside, I feel like I feel like humanity would be doing a lot better. <laughs> like quite honestly, I think there'd be a right. lot of people who were. And another thing, too, is that like. I think a lot of people um, would – there's a lot of people who right now are, are like surviving under the gender binary that we have, like the gender binarized rules who uh, would actually be significantly happier in a system that uh, – that doesn't involve that binary. I know personally a lot of people who are, for all intents and purposes, uh, you know, cishet um, who have openly and very honestly told me uh, in private that like if if it wasn't a matter of like of of uh repercussions in the workplace primarily usually uh they would uh they would have earrings they would have piercings they would wear uh crop tops or they would wear fish fishnet shirts or they would paint their nails um and uh I think that's pretty shocking to hear, right? To like peep yeah. somebody who otherwise appears to be very happy and fl and functioning well admits that actually they would be happier if they didn't feel the pressure to not do that. And I feel like that's sad. I feel like we should live yeah, in a world where sad. where somebody can be they don't have to like change how they speak about themselves if they don't want to. Um, but they can just wear something they want to wear and express themselves that way. I mean, also we'd just get more, we'd have a more diverse society. We'd have more beautiful people of different types. Yeah. 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 I guess, uh, I think this was a good conversation. I, I think I, yeah, I think the problem is a lot of the time, uh, especially for some reason with the word gender, I think like, like you said, uh, English is kind of like limiting and it makes the conversations kind of like confusing. Uh, yeah. but I think we kind of work through a good amount of that confusion here. Um, I don't yeah, have any other questions or anything. Um, but yeah. So. Well, uh, do you want to like, do you have a channel you want to shout out? I think you have a channel still, right? You still stream and whatnot, uh, right? Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. So yeah. Do, uh, please um, shout it out. This was a fantastic, absolutely fantastic conversation. Um, you know, I'm really yeah. happy that we got to have it. Um, and, uh, it worked out. Sorry. It kept you waiting. Cause I would just, it was just a misconnection thing, but, uh, yeah. Shout yeah, yourself no out, please, please. Uh, yeah. So on Twitch, I go by Myris underscore zero one. Um, so normally I stream on Tuesdays, Thursdays and sat and Sundays, but this two weeks I'm not doing that just because of exams, but yeah. And I guess like if you watch me or whatever, just be prepared that I, uh, I'm probably not as uh, left leaning as the people you mostly watch, um, though I'm not like a conservative or anything. <laughs> so, yeah, maybe yeah, you're in a pretty you lefty will... space. I'm pretty far left. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you guys will bully me there. We'll see. <laughs> hey, well, if you ever want to talk about that stuff, uh, this was a great conversation. So I'm very open to talking to you again in the future. Yep. Me too. All right. Well, uh, everybody go check out Myris underscore zero one. Uh, thank you so much for coming on. This was a fantastic conversation. Yep. Bye for I'll now. I'll see you later. Yep. Bye. Damn, that was a great fucking conversation. What a great conversation.
Oh my God, that was great. 